Absolutely. And it's even more dangerous in kids because they speak a different language from us adults. Now, these kids, we, we know that up to the age of 21, the kid's brain is still developing. I mean, the, we think the frontal lobe that's able to make executive decisions is not fully developed until they are 21. And even then, it's still growing. So these kids don't even have the words to express the way they are feeling. These kids have been taught that, you know, it has to be stiff upper lip, chin up, you don't complain, you just get it done. Or, and they may even think if I complain, if I express the way I'm feeling, I mean, I may lose my position in this team. People may think I'm not serious or dedicated enough. So they just climb it all in. And even kids that are expressive, they express it in different ways. So you might find a kid who, who is very outgoing, suddenly becomes very reclusive. You can find a kid that just suddenly starts cutting themselves for that reason, you know, self-harming. Um, you can find a kid becoming anorexic or eating too much. So you have to be on the alert. You have to know what to watch for. And unfortunately, just like if you tell me to go fly a plane now, I would have no idea what to do. Most people that are not trained in mental health don't have, even though they love these kids, even though they are good coaches or good parents, they may not know what to look out for. So I think that's the beginning. We have to know what to look out for. We have to know the individual kid. So the way kid A will respond to a stressor is very different from the way kid B will respond to a stressor. And it has nothing to do with delivering. Some kids may be on top of their game, but they may be crashing internally. And um, with kids, I mean, I'm sure in, in the last 10 years, the rate of um, adolescent and young kids, as young as seven, committing suicide, as I mean, it's alarming. I think it's, a, it's up to an epidemic proportion in my own books, you know. And um, it doesn't start in one day. A kid doesn't hang themselves or do something to hurt themselves in one day. It's been going on with time until they're unable to cope anymore. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I mean, and swimming is such an up and down sport. So you and we're so driven in in uh, times hitting a certain time, a certain qualifying time, county, regional, national, and it's. I get a lot of swimmers coming on my camp, and they do, and they and they say to me, "Oh, you know, coach, I haven't done a PB for six months. You know, I'm I'm not improving, but I'm training more and everything like that." And then it's just starting that conversation with them and saying, "Well, you know, have you look? How are you feeling at certain points in your training? How are you feeling after you've done your race? Are you getting?" really anxious are you ten are you tightening up um it's just giving them the tools and the understanding um you know it's, it comes back to me of what i do and part of the reason why i set up the camps uh, many years ago with a, a, another buddy of mine who we swam the olympics together was to to help educate the next generation of, of kids coming through and 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 mental health is just a it's just a a huge area that you can just you, you can you can really really help so many young swimmers with it and just by starting the conversation you know what did you feel before the race did you did you feel sick did you feel nervous okay here are some coping coping mechanisms that you can use going forward and and taking the emphasis away or uh, from the out the outcome which is well, swimming is so outcome driven isn't it we we go, we want to swim sub 30 seconds for 50 freestyle. We swim 30 seconds and it's like, oh, no, and the, the world has collapsed and we're never going to go sub 30. And it's, and you know, you as a coach, the easiest thing in the world is when the swimmer hits the goal. You know, you're just like, oh, great. They, they swam 29 seconds. Great. OK, off you go. Let's work on the next race. But it's the swimmer that doesn't uh, hit that time. And, and, and goes through that down and really gets down and their, and their mental health really takes a hit, it's then having the conversations, well, look, you know, maybe you were a bit, you know, you were focusing a bit too much on the time. Maybe you didn't focus on your, your processes, like your start and your underwaters and your finish. And, and that's what we try and do at Maximum Performance. We're not, we're not doing anything complex. We're just trying to help the kids to start the conversation, number one, and then build their confidence and understanding of where they need to be and what they need to focus on. Because as a as an ex-athlete, I have that understanding. 
I had a coach who would constantly make my life miserable. He would tell me things like, you're not good enough, or that I was letting the team down. And he even called me an attention seeker when I was extremely ill and he refused to believe me. I was away at boarding school for swimming and all the friends that I made there never felt like true friends. And when I left, I barely got a true goodbye from anyone. I'm now back at the small club that I started at when I was eight and I'm still scarred. Um, I'm scared to do anything after all the pain that he caused me and that's quite a lot for only being 14.